Hello viewers. So reviewing this film made me think back to the days when I used to be a hot shot fighter pilot. Breaker Breaker, this is Nanu Nanu. I'm in the pipe 5x5. Five five. Coming in for a landing and I'm coming in hot. Outside the Wire is one of the latest films on Netflix, and it's quite good. It stars Captain Falcon America himself, Anthony Mackie. No, really, he's actually a captain in this film. How cool is that? Can we just take a moment and recognize that if we took all of the films of Anthony Mackie doing press junkets for his various MCU films and put that all together as one movie, that one movie would probably be better than half of the actual MCU films? He's that entertaining of an interview. Mackie puts in an excellent performance here in Outside the Wire as Captain Leo. We also get to see some of his moves that he's been working on for his upcoming Falcon and the Winter Soldier debut. Now, the film centers around a young man named Harp, played by Damson Idris. I wasn't all that familiar with Idris's work, actually, but I do think he put in a really good performance here. The role requires a pretty nice bit of range, and I think he's able to hit those marks throughout the entire movie. Harp is a drone pilot for the United States Air Force, and he's a really good one. However, the film tries to explore the ethics of a war that can be fought at the push of a button and from thousands of miles away. And whether or not such a war actually impacts our ability to keep our humanity. Although this is something that has been explored before in other films, I think Outside the Wire does a particularly good job of actually trying to engage the idea rather than just tell you this is good and this is bad. I also think that the approach that they take disarms your immediate reactions to this question and gives you enough of a plot, enough of a good plot, I should say, to follow along so that you can just sort of come to your own realizations by the end. There are multiple angles to this story. I mean, it's not like a Christopher Nolan story where you go to the bathroom and come back and you're like, is this the same film? I'm really lost. Rather, Outside the Wire achieves this by playing with genre. It moves in and out of being an action film, a thriller, and a sci-fi movie, and it does a good job. Toward the end of the film, I do think it tries to get a little bit too smart for itself in terms of overly processing the endings and adding unnecessary wrinkles. By the end of the movie, you kind of just want to say, look, just stop. It's okay. We like you. We like you, movie. It's okay to just stop. So why should you watch this? Well, using Harp as the focal point and introducing him in the beginning as a very flawed character is a really nice way into what is a very deep discussion. Also, the sci-fi elements of this movie bring in another aspect of this conversation, one that I think should make a certain billionaire really happy. Someone who's been trying to get us to stop putting all of our funding in general artificial intelligence. Okay, we all know that Transformers is really just a documentary about how Tesla cars evolve into robots and come back from the future to warn us about our use of parsley in cooking. I don't even care about all that. I just want my Dinobot. So what's our silver lining lesson for this film? Humans have always ramped up technologies when it comes to warfare. In fact, wars have often been the driving force for technological advancements. You've got nuclear technology, jet engines, and the portable aerosol spray can. That's right. The next time you're squeezing your easy cheese on your hot dog, you can thank a war for that. Now, despite what you may have heard, all is not fair when it comes to love and war. You see, we've been having these conversations about what we should and should not allow in warfare, going back a lot further than the Geneva Convention. In Homer's epic poem, The Iliad, written roughly around 800 BC, our main protagonist, Achilles, kills the Trojan hero, Hector. But, he do but Achilles doesn't just kill Hector. He also desecrates the body and then prevents him from being buried. 
This is a big problem in ancient Greek culture because if you don't get a proper burial, you're not going to have a safe passage to the afterlife. When Hector's father, King Priam, comes to beg for his son's body from Achilles, Achilles is so moved by this gesture of a king and a father that not only does Achilles give the body back, but he also suspends the war and allows King Priam 11 days to mourn for the loss of his son and give him a proper burial. Now, I don't bring this up because it's historically accurate. I bring it up to show that we have been having this discussion, trying to balance out this humanity and war for thousands of years. With the rapid evolution of general artificial intelligence, it seems like we're due for another discussion, another Geneva Convention where we outline what we should and should not allow in modern warfare. No, not every country is going to be present. And no, not every country that is present is always going to comply. But it's the discussion that's important. It's the recognition that we need to continually remind ourselves that it's a lot easier to cut ourselves off from the bonds of humanity than it is to reattach them.